Good morning, people, and welcome to another week of this absolute madness. This week, we are working on kitchen cabinets. We're going to build out the kitchen. If you're new to this channel, we're James and Sarah, also known as the whole world or nothing. We used to be full-time backpackers, exploring the world and writing about our travels in our blog. And then the world changed. We got repatriated from Peru and found ourselves back in the UK at a loose end. So we decided to do a van conversion. Make sure you hit subscribe now so you can join us in this series as we share the highs and many lows of converting an old Mercedes Sprinter panel van into our dream home on wheels. We don't really know exactly what we're doing. We made a bit of a start yesterday and we cut down all the wood to size. We've got an idea, a rough idea of how we're trying to build it. But it involves working out how to use a router or a router or whatever that is. And it's not the simplest tool to figure out. So we're going to give it a go. Let's see how this pans out. The day before, Sarah had drawn up a detailed plan of the kitchen cabinet we were going to build, which included a full cut list of every piece of wood and its exact measurements, which, as you can see from the look on my face, I found quite confusing. But we set about chopping down some large sheets of hardwood ply into the correct sizes. First job the next morning was to figure out how to use the router. We watched loads of YouTube videos on how to do this, but because we'd never used one before, and the videos we'd watched weren't for our exact model, it took an age to figure out what we were doing, including a few bent lines, some very rough cuts, and a few swear words. To explain why we're messing around with this router and trying to figure it out, it's probably the best way that we've seen of actually constructing kitchen cabinets. What we want to do is make a carcass out of this 12mm ply. So this is going to be the sides and the kind of insides of the cabinet. For example, they could be like that. And then with the shelves, we want to slot them in to these grooves. We're going to glue them and panel pin them as well. But what that's going to do is give it a load of extra strength because that shelf isn't going anywhere and because we're not using a frame for these carcasses it kind of creates its own frame because that is jointed together securely rather than with some other kind of method where it would just be sat on top and it means that the shelf actually then becomes part of the kitchen cabinet carcass if that makes any sense at all <laughs> i think so i mean i get it let's give it a go let's give it a try it's What's the worst the... that could happen that's literally what i was just gonna say <laughs> Okay, well that's the first one cut, what do you reckon? I think it looks pretty good. It's the right size. Yep. It's in the right place. This isn't the shelf, so this is a bit of scrap board. But that goes in there. And then this is one of the kickboards that goes underneath. So that fits on the edge there, I don't know if it's on the edge. Yeah. But yeah. Very nice. Pretty much perfect. I can't actually believe it. That is pure luck, isn't it? No. <laughs> it's for our hard work and research and precision measurements. Hours of planning and preparation. <laughs> All right, let's see how long it takes us to do the rest. <laughs> We continued cutting out the rest of the grooves, which, because of how precise they needed to be, was quite a time-consuming process. How's it looking? It's looking good. We've cut the first shelf. We've just tried it in the grooves that we've cut. And this is the reason that we've been spending all this time making these grooves. So that the shelf fits really nicely in there. 
and then we're going to glue it in, knock some nails in through the side, and that is what is going to give this whole cabinet some strength. Ta -da! So that is all the bits for our first kitchen cabinet, right? Yeah, it's it just like good. IKEA. <laughs> it's just like IKEA. It's like a piece of flat pack. Yeah. So these are the four sides, the upright bits. These are the shelves, and these are the supporting bits that were across. So yeah. Should we pop it together, see if it all fits? Let's try. Just a quick note on what we are making this kitchen cabin out of. So the wood is 12 millimeter hardwood ply and the grooves that we have taken out with the router are obviously 12 millimeter and they are three millimeter deep. And then we're gonna fix it together with some wood glue and some 25 millimeter panel pins. Putting the kitchen cabinet together was indeed like assembling a piece of flat pack furniture. We painstakingly glued and nailed each individual piece in its place, measuring it at each stage to make sure everything was even and spaced as it should be. Two days toil, blood, sweat, tears. Was it worth it? Definitely worth it. That fridge fits as sweet as a nut. I know. I mean, obviously we built it to fit the fridge in. Well, yeah, but <laughs> it's also the first kitchen, well, the first cabinet, let alone kitchen cabinet that we've built. These are um, cupboards, by the way. So we've set them specifically at height so that we can get certain things in each compartment and along the top here, one, two, three, they're gonna be drawers. Obviously they're not in yet, we've not made those yet. We've got to have a space above the fridge for air circulation, so it doesn't get too hot on that. Um, obviously the worktop's gotta to go on top. But yeah, that's the, the carcass, as James likes to call it. Technical term, mate. <laughs> is it? Yeah. I thought you made it up. And here it is in situ. That's great. Pretty exciting. First bit of furniture in, done, and it fits. And the door shuts. <laughs> and the door shuts. <laughs> Always a bonus, right? I can't believe we actually made it ourselves. I know. I, know. <laughs> I think that about everything all the time, to be honest. I didn't th think that it was going to be uh, possible for us to do it. But what, there you go. But we we're just going to be in IKEA. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. All right, guys. Been shopping this morning, haven't we? Got a little haul. Tell them what we're doing today. Choose the big shop at Wix. <laughs> we got hinges. We got some ball catchers. <laughs> Is that what they're called? I don't know, something like that. <laughs> um, we got magnets and we have got drawer slider things. And we're going to try and complete the thing that we built yesterday, the cabinet. Get all the doors on, drawers in, working, all of that, ready to paint and ready to go pretty much. Obviously they are looking a little bit rough and ready at the minute because they've not been sanded or filled or even stuck together. But these are our drawer fronts all cut. What do you think? I think they're going to look pretty decent. Building the drawers required some more complicated calculations which would take into account the width of the runners we were placing them on. Plus, we designed the middle drawer to be shallower than the other two to allow the fridge to have a 5cm gap above it to stop it from overheating, but with a fascia on to ensure you wouldn't be able to tell from the front. We've got all the drawer bits cut and we've got one together. Here he is. Um, 
but as you can see it's getting a little bit dark now so <laughs> we're gonna have to stop for the day and pick up where we left off tomorrow see you then The next morning we assembled the other drawers using a combination of glue, panel pins and Craig joints. Alright, last drawer. Last drawer. If we mess this one up I'll be very upset. <laughs> Fits. I think it fits. Look at that. We're in. Look at that. We've got three drawers. One, two, three. Beautiful. All running nice. Smooth as. That's pretty sweet. I'm impressed with us. Well done. And guess what came just in time? What? Our handles. Oh yeah. Show them. So that's it, continuing the matte black theme. Pretty simple, but that's what we wanted really. Simple, classy. <laughs> Sleek little number. <laughs> yeah, I think they should look nice. It took Jay ages to pick these, and in the end, he didn't even pick them, I did. He was being a right diva. Draw handle right. diva. <laughs> I'm still not 100% sure I like him, but they'll do. Well, it'll look better when it's not wonky. All that was left to do was to glue and pin the drawer fronts on, stick the trim detail in place and first fit the handles. This is where we have got to so far today. So we've got, well, we've got all three drawers put together. One's there, the front's still drying on it. So we've got those in place and we've got the cupboard doors made. They're drying at the minute as well. All the faces on them are drying at the minute. We've had to do something here because the screws that came with the handles were really quite long um, so we've done that so that we can use the same screws and yeah just got to finish putting the other drawer in and the cupboard doors in and then we've got to sand it all down and fill it and prep it what did you have a moment there yeah <laughs> it's so cold i can't even think of what i'm saying just got to finish the uh, uh. <laughs> It is freezing today. It's ridiculous. Yesterday was like a summer's day. I know. Today's like a winter's day. I know, it's horrible. It's going alright though, isn't it? With the uh, with the kitchen cabinet. First kitchen cabinet. Yeah. I Slow. Mean, touch wood. <laughs> it's not been too bad. Yeah. It is slow, definitely, but I didn't expect it to be quick. That's true. We've never done it before. It's um, pretty complicated. It's intricate, I think, is, is the best way to yeah, describe it. Yeah, really. we've got to be so precise with the measurements, haven't we? Yeah, we were talking about it last night, actually. It's like, it's it's physical work, but it's brain aching as well, because everything has to be kind of a millimetre this way, a millimetre that way. And we're talking millimetres, you know. If it's a millimetre out, then it just looks wrong. So <laughs> it's really, <laughs> really um, intricate. Oh, it's sunny today. It is very nice. <clears throat> anyway, morning. Morning. What's going on? Well, this is how far we got yesterday with our kitchen cabinet and it was all going really well. We had one door on, we were just about to put the next one on. And then we realised that the hinges that we used, the screws, were too long for the uh, thickness of wood that we used. And the reason for that is that we've used 6mm ply for the doors, just to save on weight really but the screws I think were about 12 mil so they would have been going through the other side. Now they, f they do all right on one side of the hinge because it's double thickness where we've done this kind of face but the other side of the hinge falls just inside of that 
so it would be coming through. Um, so what we're going to have to do is change the type of hinges that we're using, which we didn't particularly want to do because these ones are obviously concealed and they're, they're quite nice, they're quite heavy duty, got quite a solid open and close and all that. But we're going to have to use like a traditional butt hinge, which we've just gone to pick up this morning. And I mean they're fine and they're black which matches the handles and all the other kind of accessories and stuff in the van. But the issue with this type of hinge is that you do have a little bit that sticks out. So you're going to see all of the hinges pretty much on this um, kitchen cabinet now, which isn't what we'd planned, but it should still work. Now another option would have been to use 6mm screws, which with the thickness of the, the metal here, where the head would have gone up to, wouldn't have actually gone through the other side of the ply. But we're just thinking because it is such thin ply, we'd rather have a bit of a thicker screw in it just so that it doesn't risk kind of pulling out the ply itself and damaging that. So with these hinges it can all go into the 12mm bit which means that we're going to be able to use a 12mm screw basically which gives us a lot more security on the hinge itself and means that hopefully there's not really much risk of it being damaged. We didn't feel much yesterday because well it was quite stressful and we had about 15 arguments in the process of um getting those covered doors on. <laughs> so, <the> rest. <laughs> um, we are at a stage now where we have filled all the holes, all the cracks, all the imperfections. So this has all been drying overnight and we are ready to sand that off and get a coat of paint on you. Yep, let's do it. <laughs> How's your beard then? <laughs> Feel very distinguished. Thank you. That's all word for it. Van Bill's taking its toll, eh? Tell me about it. I've just been doing sanding for three hours, so that will put your beard grey for anyone, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Looks good though, doesn't it? What the beard? Well, the your beard does look good, but I mean <laughs> the cabinet looks good. Yeah, the cabinets. It's getting there. It's getting there. So I'm just going to wipe it down now with a bit of water, get all of the dust and bits off and then wipe it with some white spirit to get it prepped for the first coat of the paint and then probably get that first coat on. And I've just been getting the fridge wired up with its connectors ready to have power to it. This is all wired up this end now ready to go for the fridge. I've just put a um, little bit of conduit on there because it's coming through that hole it's going to come into the bottom of the unit so that it's not um, damaging the wires or anything if that's moving around. So that's going down there, all that wire's got to be fixed into place, down there to the electric department. All right, we've sorted out these hinges, I think, finally, with a bit of advice from my dad. So we've put a block of wood on here to make it thicker and they are opening and closing nicely. So we've just got to put them in position now to see if they fit in the space, which was the problem with the last ones because the last hinges, because the hinges were coming out here. So they were fine on the unit when it was out in the open space, but in the space that we designed it for it didn't quite work. And obviously I'm gonna to have to fill these um, to make that look all right, but do that later. Carry it in again. How many times have we done this now? Um, this will be the 65th time. <laughs> so we yanked the cabinet back in to check it definitely fit. Now prepare yourself for one of Sarah's trademark explanations. Let me try and explain what was happening and why we've had such a headache with this. These hinges that we have on now, until we put this fix on so that there was a, it made the cupboard door thicker, we couldn't put these hinges on because there wasn't enough depth <laughs> in the wood for them to screw into. It's a really stupid thing. Anyway, and then my dad was like, well, why don't you just put a bit of wood on the inside and they'll make it thicker. So we were like, oh yeah. Well, I was like, oh yeah. Jay was like, I already said this last week. And we've tried not to have an argument about it today and we've been all right, I think. Anyway, if I'd have listened to you last week, I might have 
done this ages ago. Whatever. So now these hinges are on, which are inside the cupboard, as opposed to those other ones that were outside the cupboard. It means that we've got enough space. Like there's a tiny gap here because obviously the cupboard door needs to open. But most importantly, there's enough space here that this which is the cladding, this is painted white on the other side, is gonna be able to go on this door to finish it off. Whereas before, with the gaps of the hinges and then the space that was needed for the door to open, we had to have too much of a big gap here that this was pushed right up against here and we wouldn't have been able to get this cladding on. Obviously, we don't wanna leave it like that. So that's what the dilemma was. And now it's all fixed. That all makes sense, yeah? That was the most convoluted explanation in the world ever. But Basically, the hinges were too big, the space was too small, and now the hinges are smaller. We've got enough space. <sighs> the next day, we were finally ready to begin painting our kitchen cabinet. But as we learned from the cladding, it would be an extremely long process to get four coats on with around six hours drying time required between each one. So we made sure to get an early start and allowed ourselves two whole days. Well, this is looking great. You like it? Yeah. It's amazing. Cool. Just got all of these to do, and then we can get it installed in about six hours when it's dried. <laughs> Once it was all dry, it was just a case of reassembling it all in place. We used brackets to secure it to the wall and our kitchen cabinet was complete. Well that's it for this week chaps, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button to let us know and drop us a comment if you've got any questions about how or why we constructed it in this way. And if you're new to the channel, we'd love you to consider subscribing and clicking that little alarm bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. Next week, we're carrying on with the kitchen, but this time we'll be constructing the unit to house our oven and hob. Catch you then.